Hello, and thank you so much for your patience. Welcome to the 2022 Global Engagement Summit. I am Rachel Bowen Pittman, and I have the privilege to serve as Executive Director of the United Nations Association of the USA, or UNA USA. While I am not speaking from the dais in the General Assembly Hall in New York City, which normally is where the Global Engagement Summit takes place, and I'm not looking out to all of you in the seats of diplomats, I'm just as excited to welcome you virtually. Whether you are a seasoned UNA member or just getting to know us, I am thrilled to have you today. Our summit's theme this year is One Humanity, One Planet, One Common Agenda, which highlights the importance of unity and that the only way to drive global progress is to do it together. We're all here because we share the same vision of a future where all countries uphold the principles included in the UN Charter. As we are seeing with Russia's invasion into Ukraine, we still have a long way to go. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres recently said, under the present circumstances, I must change my appeal. President Putin, in the name of humanity, bring your troops back to Russia. This conflict must stop now. Just as it's important for countries to condemn Russia's actions and stand up for what they believe in, so it is for us, which is why we're gathering together as we're doing today and reaffirming the values we believe in is so important. And on the days I feel as though the world's challenges are too big, I often get a reminder about the importance of the work we do and its ability to make great change. Most recently, I received an email that showed me how UNA USA members are addressing complex issues every day. Late last year, in recognition of Human Rights Day, our UNA Los Angeles chapter partnered with a sense of hope to furnish homes for young people aging out of foster care just before the holidays. UNA Los Angeles raised $6,000 to furnish a home for Brianna, who's currently in school working towards her associate's degree in psychology to become a therapist. In their email, UNA Los Angeles shared a video that captured the day they decorated the home and gave this amazing gift to Brianna. She said that life has plenty of opportunities to give, not only to her, but other people and that having a sense of home makes her feel like she can conquer the world and do better. UNA USA members realize that this one act will inspire Brianna to achieve her dreams, but at the same time, we're humbled by her. The members were inspired by, by her courage, perseverance, and compassion. Change makers like Brianna in our network of UNA USA members will continue to make a difference, doing their part to build a better world for all of us. From coast to coast, UNA members and chapters are stepping up and leaning in to make sure we leave no one behind. From college students advocating to remove single-use plastics on their campuses, to community chapters working with law enforcement to end human trafficking, to individuals, members, advocating for restoration of U.S. funding for UNESCO. We are showing the world that we will continue to rise to the occasion to make meaningful action to ensure our future is one of equality, justice, and accountability. Our mission to educate, inspire, and immobilize Americans to support the vital work of the United Nations and the Sustainable Development Goals is what drives us to lift our voices through civic engagement, through grassroots advocacy, public events, community partnerships, and volunteering in our local, local communities. And the work of the UN is needed now more than ever. The COVID-19 pandemic, rising cases of discrimination, racism, and violence, 
mitigating the impacts of climate change around the world, the worsening humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan, and now the Ukraine. But rest assured that it, in its 76 years, the UN has never once backed down from its promise to deliver a better world, and it never will. No matter the challenge, the UN is prepared to meet it, and so are we. UNA USA members have been advocating for the UN's fundamental purpose before it even existed. After all this time, we, we remain just as committed to answering the call to action. Behind all great movements for change is a network of advocates making it possible. And let me be clear, this work is hard, but we can't afford to become complacent. That's why this event and your participation is so critical. This is your opportunity to learn how the UN is responding to challenges, hear from change makers how they're driving progress on certain issues, and most importantly, how you can take action. As you go through the day and listen to UN officials, lawmakers, and activists, I encourage you to think about what it will take to truly have one humanity, one planet, one common agenda, and what your role will be to contribute to its success. Throughout today's program, you will have more than 150 ways to encourage to support the work of the UN, its agencies, and the issues it seeks to address. From tweeting to sending a message to your elected officials, we encourage you to amplify your involvement from a viewer to a doer. And the opportunities to engage don't stop there. Beyond today's event, you can, for example, participate in a virtual coffee chat hosted by your local chapter. Tune into an upcoming global engagement online series program. Join us on an Instagram live session with one of our affinity groups and join our movement and participate in UNA USA's Leadership Summit and Lobby Day, June 5th through the 7th, which is a signature event that brings together more than 500 UNA advocates from around the country to Washington, DC for skills building, trainings, policy workshops, and a ro robust lobby day with congressional offices. To learn more, visit the UNA USA exhibit booth in our Engage Hub on this platform. In closing, if you ever have one of those moments where you feel overwhelmed by glo global challenges, here's my advice. Remember your impact. From small acts of kindness, and advocating on behalf of the UN to your members of Congress, to advancing local prog progress on the SDGs, to creating effective partnerships, just as UNA Los Angeles did with a sense of home. Your voice, your vote, your actions do make a difference and do make the world a better place for everyone, everywhere. Finally, I also wanna take a moment to thank the Global Engagement Summit Committee, co-led by Akash Patel and Bettina Hausman, and the UNA USA team, led by our Senior Director Farah Ek, for their hard work and energy to organize this summit. At this time, I have an honor, the honor to share with you a special greeting from the UN Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed. I send my warmest greetings to the UN Foundation and the United Nations Association of the USA. It is an honor to speak to the many outstanding American leaders and friends who are working and advocating for our United Nations. You are amplifying our messages and multiplying our connections across the United States and around the world. It is a great pleasure to thank you for your steadfast support. Like many of you, I started my journey as an advocate working to increase access to education and social services in my home country of Nigeria. Today, I'm working to build and strengthen partnerships with global leaders, civil society, and change makers like you to implement the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the incredible 17 Sustainable Development Goals. With only eight years left in the decade of action to implement the SDGs and many setbacks as a result of the pandemic, our work now is more important than ever. 
despite the many challenges our world is facing, from COVID-19 and climate change to new and ongoing conflicts and worsening inequalities, I begin my second term with a renewed sense of hope and firm belief in the power of solidarity. Why? Because of advocates and supporters like you, whether on your school campus, in your community, or on a national scale, you are putting words into action, laying the foundations for a better future. Your advocacy has impact. Over the past year, the United States has re-engaged with the United Nations and once again put its support behind our humanitarian and development agencies. I'm sure many of you attended last year's summit and watched live as the Secretary General Guterres welcomed America's re-entry into the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. My message to you all today is this, remain motivated, mobilized and with hope. The UN Foundation and the United Nations Association of the USA are paths to progress for all, local and global, we are all connected. If you engage in an educational program, if you take a step to write an article, if you give your support to a local service agency, you are helping to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. The UN Foundation and UNA USA are making a real difference in homes, communities, organizations, and corporations here in the US and around the world. Small actions can lead to big change. Together, we will build a healthier, more equitable world and create inclusive economies and societies that truly leave no one behind. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General Mohammed, for your inspiring remarks. We look forward to our continued partnership in implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Now, I am very excited to bring to the virtual stage our keynote speaker, Stefan Dujaric, spokesperson for the UN Secretary General. In his role, Mr. Dujaric has the unenviable un position of answering questions of UN correspondents from all over the world on a range of topics as diverse of, as the UN itself. Mr. Dujaric became spokesperson for, sec for the Secretary General in March 2014 after serving as spokesperson for UN Secretary General Kofi Annan from 2005 to 2006. Mr. Dujaric has been a long friend, a longtime friend of UNA USA. For many years, he has traveled across the country to speak to UNA colleges and community chapters on UN Day. He has participated in our leadership summit in Washington, DC. And in the past years during this summit, he has invited small groups of UNA members to watch him in action during a press briefing. As we all know, the UN is addressing many global challenges these days, which means Mr. Dujaric's schedule is more full than usual. So we are especially appreciative of his time today. Mr. Dujaric, I will now give you the virtual floor. Thank you very much, Rachel. And uh, it's, I have to say that today has been an absolutely crazy day and it's just nice to be able to take a pause uh, and spend some time with, with friends. So I just want to thank, uh, thank you, Rachel. Thank you also, of course, the UN Foundation uh, and through you, Rachel, the whole of the national leadership of UNA USA for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm just sorry we could not meet here in person in the General Assembly, which is just a few doors down from the studio where I'm now sitting. That hall, as you know, is not just a meeting room. It's a room that has witnessed history and carries with it the hopes of the world. While we've seen so much progress in so many areas since the founding of the United Nations some 76 years ago, millions of people lifted out of poverty, diseases eradicated, hunger vastly reduced. Today, we are at a moment of heightened risks and tensions. Just yesterday, member states met in the General Assembly to discuss the situation in and around Ukraine. The Secretary General spoke to them in very stark terms. The situation in Ukraine is the most serious global peace and security crisis in recent years. We also had a very dramatic meeting in the Security Council last night after which the Secretary General made a very direct plea to President Putin to stop the military operation. 
it is clear that what we are seeing will have tragic consequences for everyone involved, for Ukraine, for Russia, and beyond. The humanitarian consequences on civilian populations will be devastating. We can only imagine the refugee crisis which may well occur. It is vital that Ukraine's neighbors keep their doors open for refugees. On the ground, the United Nations continues to stand and deliver, as we always do. As we speak, UN staff remain in the areas of conflict to do whatever they can to support civilians on both sides of the so-called line of contact. <clears throat> Since the start of this year, we've managed to deliver over 140 metric tons of humanitarian supplies across that line of contact. This conflict, of course, will have an impact we cannot even foresee in terms of the consequences for the global economy, just as we're starting to emerge from the pandemic and the economic situation of so many developing countries remains very fragile. We are, of course, concerned with the spike of energy prices, but also food prices, given Ukraine's critical position in the world's wheat production, not to mention instability on global financial markets. I can tell you that the Secretary General is remaining fully engaged with global partners to ensure continued support to all impacted civilians to work towards an immediate end of the conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, we're of course facing a number of other serious crises, which I would be happy to discuss with you in the question and answer period. But before we get to that, I just want to say two words, and that is thank you. I can't thank UNAUSA enough and its chapters and its members for all the groundwork that you do to ensure that the relationship between the United Nations and the people of the United States remains strong. The bond between the US and the UN needs to be unbreakable. We need American engagement and American leadership in the United Nations. U.S. engagement and leadership in the U.N. is fundamental to the effectiveness of our organization. The United States is not only our largest funder, it is a country whose founding ideals of democracy and human rights are very much reflected in our own founding documents, the Charter of the United Nations and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The presence of American DNA in those two documents is undeniable. Active and constructive U.S. engagement pushes us to be a better and more effective organization. That engagement, of course, has not always been easy. Political pendulums swing back and forth, and we've all needed to adapt. But I firmly believe that the fundamentals are strong. And those fundamentals are strong because of the impressive work that UNA USA and the UN Foundation and others, particularly those people at the grassroots level. The efforts you make at the local level are critical to the work we do at the global level. You are that critical link that brings us closer to the first words of the charter, we the peoples. You raise awareness in your communities. You engage with the business community, with students, with local leaders. Some of you today may have also participated in the drafting of the sustainable development goals. To put it simply, you help people understand that the, rele the relevance of the United Nations and the relevance of their United Nations in their lives. The support you bring to our work by doing everything you can to ensure that the sustainable development goals are not just implemented in developing countries, but also right here in your communities. And that goes to the heart of what the United Nations stands for. And I've seen that firsthand during visits to local chapters, to San Diego and to Denver, to name just two. Your efforts to work with your elected representatives to ensure that there is a continued and sustained American engagement in the United Nations is vital. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, let me end with a quote from President Truman when he spoke at the General Assembly's first meeting in the United States in 1946. And I quote, the American people look upon the United Nations not as a temporary expedient, but as a permanent partnership a partnership among the people of the world for their common peace and common well-being. We look to you as a key to strengthening that partnership, and we can never thank you enough for the contributions you make to our shared missions. So, Rachel, once again, thank you for having me and rearranging your, your schedule to fit in with, um, 
my the, the work I do during business hours, and I'm happy to spend a little bit of time with you and answer any question that anyone may have. Um, so over to you, Rachel. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dujaric, for your remarks about the UN and how we can work together. I think we do have time to um, take one or two questions. So I'm going to look to my team. Here we go. They're already putting questions up on the screen for us. So the first question to you is, if the Security Council is unable to act on the Russian invasion of the Ukraine, will the Secretary General be able to take the challenge to the General Assembly for direct action? Well, what we will, uh, what we may very well see um, is that the General Assembly takes up again the issue of Ukraine. They took it up yesterday. Um, I mean, it is no secret that uh, the Security Council is not united in speaking with one voice on, on Ukraine. I, for those of you who didn't have a chance to see the Security Council meeting last night, I would encourage you to watch it because it was a real moment in history. Um, so, yes, it, it will be taken up by the General Assembly, but let's be honest, if you look at the Charter, there are specific responsibilities attributed to the Security Council, specific powers that the Security Council has. And so the Security Council remains the, the central organ uh, for the preservation of peace and security in the world. Thank you. And let's see if we have time for one more question. We do. Raju Bhatt has a question. Um, are India and China going to stay on the sidelines? Well, uh, Raju, you know, I, I struggle to speak on behalf of the Secretary General um, so I can't really speak on behalf of member states. Um, both China and India are obviously extremely important global players, and both of them, I mean, China is a permanent member of the Security Council, and India is an elected member of the Security Council. So I think their voice, uh, their action uh, bears, bears watching, and they also, as every member of the Security Council, have a special responsibility. Great. Uh, I think we do have time for one or two more. The next one is from Sophia, Al Sophia Olivas. Um, Mr. Dujaric, what actions can we as individuals and corporations take right now to impact Ukraine? Sophia, that's a fantastic question. Uh, and it is always uh, a tough question is what role do we have as individuals uh, to try to stop war? Uh, Obviously, one is to ensure you're engaged in the political process and engage with your elected officials. In the immediate term, I think one of the things that uh, corporations especially can do is to give to the UN's humanitarian operations. Because as you may know, the, we are, are, our core work is funded on a, on a set budget. Our humanitarian work is funded as we go. So we really have no reserves. So the world, you know, if there's a full-blown humanitarian crisis, the UN um, Refugee Agency will need help. The UN uh, World Food Program, UNICEF, all those people, all those organizations that are there focused on helping men, women, and children will need help. And the help they will need in order to help people is cash. And I think there are ways through the UN Foundation uh, to support the, the humanitarian work of the UN and I think that's that's an immediate uh, an immediate and quick step, impactful step they could take. Great. And one more question from Ogle Widener. Thank you, Mr. Dujaric. Could the member states of the General Assembly also appeal to Mr. Putin to withdraw from Ukraine? Well, I mean, you know, the the member states can pass whatever resolution they would like. Uh, the question is, of course, they they'll need a majority. Um, yes, they could pass a resolution appealing for, uh, for Russia to halt its, uh, its military uh, operation. That is, that is indeed a, a possibility. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Dujaric. Thank you for sharing your insights on the UN strategies and solutions around these global challenges we face today. And we look forward to engaging you once again in a future UNA USA program. So thank you for your, your time, especially um, during with, you know, with everything going on. We really appreciate it.
Great, Rachel, thank you so much. And, and again, thank you to all your, your members. Uh, I think going, one of the things I miss the most is being able to take this show on the road uh, and sit down with a small group of members and, and talk to them and hear from them and learn from them. So thank you and hope to see some of you in person soon. Thank you. At this time, I would like to bring our Global Engagement Summit Committee Chairs Akash Patel and Bettina Hausman to the virtual stage. Thank you, Rachel. And as you just alluded with Stefan, now more than ever, thank you, Rachel, as you just alluded with Stefan, that now, that now more than ever, the United Nations needs you and the world needs the UN. As chairs of the Global Engagement Summit Planning Committee, Bettina and I are excited to welcome you to this year's event. UNA USA's mission is to educate, inspire, and mobilize Americans to support the United Nations work. And that's just what we intend to do throughout the summit today. We have a spectacular lineup, including everyday change makers, influencers, United Nations representatives, lawmakers, and other advocates for global progress. With over 160 ways for you to move from viewer to doer, we hope that this summit inspires you to find out how you can take action to support a strong United States, United Nations partnership. As every year, the GES is a result of true teamwork. Bettina and I extend our heartfelt thanks to the planning committee. Our gratitude goes to the United Nations Association of the United States, National Office, the United Nations Foundation staff, Global Goals Ambassadors, and our colleagues at the UNA USA National Council. A special shout out to our colleague, Senior Director Farah Eck for her tireless efforts behind the scenes. Thank you, Akash. It's really inspiring to see how the Global Engagement Summit has evolved throughout the years and stayed current. So thanks to contributions and participation from our dedicated members. As we woke up to the crisis in Ukraine, our solidarity and engagement will be crucial. One humanity, one planet, one common agenda is our collective roadmap for action. As Akash said, today's Global Engagement Summit is set to provide us with the tools and network to deliver on our mission as members of UN associations here in the US and around the world. Today's GES is our summit to engage on what we do best, community organizing, to stand up for the UN so the UN keep standing up for the world. As we had the fortune to welcome UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohamed and UN spokesperson Stefan Dujarek, Please be reminded, the UN is made of member states. It will be our civic duty to stay engaged on the unbreakable link between the US and the UN. We are ready along with the many thousands of attendees to engage, to become the best global citizens we can be. Again, welcome to your 2022 UNA USA Global Engagement Summit. Back to you, Rachel. Thank you, Akash and Bettina, and thank you again for all of your hard work. So at this time, you have about a little over five minutes before our next session at two o'clock. And as a reminder, please take this time to visit our Engage Hub. There's a, there are a lot of great activities and information for you to read. You can also try it out our Speed Networking, um, which you can find uh, the link to that in the, in the home, at the homepage, and you can test out your skills on Kahoot. So let's take these five minutes as a quick break, and then I will see you soon in the next session. Thank you.